Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Unbounded Greatness, where we bring you ordinary people who have done extraordinary things to make our society a better place. We bring you mentors who guide you through your journey of success in business, in your career, in your personal growth, and in your money. Today and tonight, we have Dr. Gladys Netich. She's a research engineer at MIT, one of the world's best universities, and she's the CEO of ILU, a non-profit organization aimed at inspiring young girls and women. She's, she earned her doctorate of philosophy in aerospace engineering from Oxford University. She won an award called the Skull World Forum Fellow for running a platform to inspire women and girls. She was also selected as top 40 under 40 women in Kenya. Welcome, Dr. Gladys. Thank you so much for the kind introduction, Shiko. You're welcome. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, and thanks for having me. Excited to be here. That is wonderful. You're very welcome. But Dr. Gladys, you started from a very, very humble background. And right now you're out here doing all these things, being a researcher in MIT, one of the best universities in the world. Did you ever think in your life that you'd ever reach to this far? Not at all. So I, I never, I, I guess I just, I, 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 just, I just kept doing what I was supposed to do at any given point in time, meaning when I was in primary, I was working hard to get a better score in KCP. Same when I went to high school, I was working hard to get a better score. Uh, during, uh, I was working hard to get like proper points to get me to university. When I go to uni, I was working hard to get a first class. I wanted to get a first class. I even don't know why actually, but I just wanted a first class. So from, from the word go, I was aiming at first class. I, I, I just do not know that these small things will kind of build up and form into a big thing and taking me to Oxford and now at MIT. So I never thought, to be honest. Wow, you are doing a, a great job. You're, you know, you're, the work you're doing is beyond, you know, inspiring the young girls working on, at MIT in various uh, research that is impacting the society. Yeah. So what did you do that got you up from, you know, Dayquart and the, the village up to working in MIT? Mm. Uh, I, I don't think it's one thing for sure. I think it's, it's a combination of factors. Hard work, one, focus, dreaming big. But for, I, I think... I would say the biggest, the biggest is, um, and you will allow me to quote. Uh, there is there is one quote I like by Sir Isaac Newton, uh, the, the the person who discovered who discovered gravity. So he he said, if I have if I have seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants, and in my case, it's it's truly that. So you asked me like what. What, what do I think is the reason why I'm here? Like what, what factors? So I would say hard work, focus, dreaming, but for sure it's the, it's the, it's countless number of shoulders uh, or countless number of giants along my way who generously gave me their shoulders to stand on. For instance, I was very poor in English in high school. And if it wasn't for Madame Karanu, my English high, my um, high school English teacher, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for my mom to dream big and bold in a village where where I come from, girls education is still not a thing. It's still some people still take it for granted and it's not it's not taken seriously. So if it wasn't for my mom in that environment to dream for bigger things for me, to continuously push me towards realizing those goals, for sure I wouldn't be here. So I would say the biggest factor is those giants, my mom, my English, uh, my high school English teacher, my lecturers who saw something in me and they pushed me towards achieving that. So if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Oh, wonderful. So uh, that is a very uh, good uh, thing and an inspiring thing. So what mindset did you have to uh, pick up 
and maintain so that you can be you you could be able to maintain your track and maintaining the right path towards achieving all that you have achieved mm uh i would say uh, the 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 mindset i would summarize it like this the the mindset of dreaming bold dreams like big dreams and the courage to follow it through and ability to turn a deaf deaf ear to people who've tried to discourage me so sometimes i i remember like instances where i would want i would want a and someone will tell me a is not possible no one has done a before and just that ability that courage to throw yourself into the swimming pool and try to learn swimming and manage so that mindset has helped me greatly so dreaming bold because when you are dreaming bold you're not dreaming any average dream right so so for so many people around you they will question if it's even possible because they've not seen someone doing that before and so what you need is the courage to then follow that dream through and then once in a while ability to have a deaf ear and assume what people say and just keep at it oh wonderful so in 2018 you're selected as to 40 and 40 women in Kenya because of the great things you're doing the wonderful work you're doing then i think you are in oxford and you you are working with Rolls Royce and that was a really wonderful thing you are doing what lessons did you learn from that experience getting to top 40 and 40 it's something i never expected and i would say it's like lupita put it clearly no matter where you from and in this in this in in, in this context i'll say no matter your age your dreams are valid so when i was nominated to the list i even i had no idea that i was i was nominated so i just received an email one fine morning in november of 2018 was in october of 2018 Uh, from business daily newspaper telling me that i was nominated to the list and i was like wow so the list carries high profile women doing amazing stuff in kenya and beyond and just making it nomin- getting nominated in nominated into the list at the age of i was 27 then yeah it was it was one of those dreams oh that is very wonderful so you know the engineering field is male dominated and people assume you know engineering is mostly men for men so what are the challenges that you have faced as a woman in engineering a lot for one so people pe- people around you because you are a minority because it's male dominated so most of the classes you will find you more Uh, like a jquad we were nine girls and almost in a, a almost a class of 80 students and then when i went to oxford there was also another factor so we were only three i think three girls in a lab of like 50 phd students and then i was the only black woman so uh, when i was doing my phd there was that other factor added to the minority so i was not only female in a male dominated field i was also black in a white dominated field and in that context because people you can thinking about it in retrospect you, i can't really blame anyone because the, if you've not seen someone who looks like you then you don't trust them to start with so i had so many instances where someone would just go around asking a question in the lab and they leave me they don't ask me so they don't tell you openly although in one meeting someone 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 had me explaining what i was doing for my phd and just casually said you don't look like an engineer and i just you know that question just echoed in my mind so then how does an engineer look like so questions like those kind of make you feel a bit inferior and doubt yourself so some, everyone has some doubts about the work they do and now when people keep reminding you or they show you that they don't trust your work then it's even bigger so there've been a number of challenges but i would say that's the biggest so people saying things or doing things passive aggressive to to make you want to prove yourself and it's a bit draining sometimes 
and how I've handled it mostly just acknowledging that acknowledging that that's there that as long as you are in a you are as long as you're a minority be it in ter- be it in terms of gender or color that people around you will not will not trust you so it it it, it takes it takes time to un- for them to understand you and to open up and to trust that you are as intelligent as they are so just anticipating that kind of helps the shock so you are not shocked when they do when they do that and also just concentrating on what I do. I, I, I like my work. I love my work and just concentrating on that and also having a support group as people you trust that people you can tell these things. So when someone treats you badly at workplace, if you don't have anyone, you can tell them at workplace, then you have this support group. You can open up to them and you can narrate the story. They can encourage you. They can show their trust in you and it helps a bit. Wow. That is really really encouraging people face so many challenges that they don't, they don't know how to face them and how to handle them you know and sometimes it throw them off course and that is really wonderful to know how you handled it and how you remained on course and i remember when you were talking uh, on phone you mentioned about the pressure you receive from people back at home and back at the village being a woman and the expectations from people at home what is the biggest pressure that uh, people have really caused on you Mm. A lot of pressure. So for one, uh, career-wise, I would let me divide. Let me let me talk about say in terms of what I wanted to pursue. So for instance, when I got my results in two thousand and eight, and two thousand and nine, we were doing course revision for universities. My dad had a different idea of what he wanted me to pursue in uni at uni. My brothers had different idea. My friends had different suggestions. So there were all these like pressures to, to, to pursue what other people want. But I, at least I mean, what helped me to make up my mind was my passion. I, I wanted, I was sure, I was sure. I did not know a lot of, I, I did not know a lot about career, but for sure I wanted to pursue engineering. And not only, not only engineering, but mechanical in particular. So just, I just followed my heart. But pressures are always there. Like all the time you get into a junction, you don't know whether to take job A, job B. You get into a junction. You don't know whether to further your studies or to get a job. So there have been so many of those along the way. But personally, what has helped me to make up my mind is following passion, my passion and listening to my inner voice, whatever I'm feeling, whatever I feel strong. I, I, I go with that. And I think you also mentioned about, I think there is also a pressure that we face uh, as women, I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, women face that more than men, the pressure to settle down, for instance, or to get married. Uh, I, I remember when I was preparing to go to Oxford and, I, and my friends knew that I was going to do a, a PhD and they were like, okay, so you'll be a doctor. You will scare men away. Uh, do you have someone with it? Make sure you settle before you go there. And sometimes it's like that but i think if you if you just try and make sense like if you if you try and and ask yourself why are you doing that like why are you settling down are you settling down because of time or because you've gotten someone you want to settle down with are you settling down because of pressure and things like that so those pressures are there but um having courage i I, I will i will repeat that It, it takes courage to be different and to follow your passion and to follow your heart. So everyone, everyone else will tell you do. But if you if your heart is telling you to do B, it will take a lot of courage to to turn a deaf ear and follow your and follow your passion or what you want to do. Has any form of pressure someone say in your life through your journey to your success ever bothered you? Uh, sorry. Has any kind of pressure or what someone has said about you or you know in your journey has it ever bothered you yeah uh, so, sometimes uh, some 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 are not personal and you learn to shake them off but some can be pressure from people you care about and and it and it can get to you but at the same time uh, it it just takes courage i think it's been um, so when when you get 
because you you are at a junction and people are telling you to do this and you want to do this i think it takes time and a lot of speaking to oneself and asking yourself a lot of questions why are you choosing this and not this are you happy with the choice you want to make and i think that has been uh, that's my, that has been my take and that's what i do a lot uh-huh. Uh-huh. yes yeah but for sure yeah for sure i think it's normal so sometimes you you get a lot of pressures and and, and they, they can get to you yeah that's wonderful so here's a very interesting in your, in your field yeah what are your insights on the future of what you're doing in your field of career mm i i i i can't really tell so i i can't tell what uh, you you mean what i will be doing in future yeah. is that is that okay so at, at the moment i'm uh, the fund i'm doing a postdoctoral research which is a research you do after you finish your your phd and you're trying to figure out life you've trying to figure out whether you want to go to academia or to go to industry so it's it's that uh it's uncertain space and most people the, you apply and you get funding and you do postdoctoral research and that's where i am so during this one year i got a fellowship like a funding from uh, it's called schmidt science fellowship so i got the fellowship and it's helping me so i'm while i'm doing research the fellowship is also helping us be intentional about honing our leadership skills something i'm passionate about the leadership side of things so while i'm doing my research while i'm working on engineering i'm also working on my leadership skills so for sure i don't know what my future i could be five years ten years i have no idea where i will be but i just think uh, the only idea i have is that because i'm passionate about science about engineering and i'm passionate about leadership the only bigger picture i think i have is that i think i'll be a science or engineering leader somewhere i have no idea where oh that is beautiful speaking about leadership you are the ceo of ilu foundation where you inspire young women and girls in kenya what does that mean to you and why did you decide to venture into that um so coming coming from coming from uh from the village and having someone having people to to support you along the way some people to um to encourage you so getting to where i've gotten to it's been because of support of so many people along the way and so uh when i was just thinking about how do i then how do i how do i do my part in the in the universe in terms of helping other people and that's how the idea of ilu was born so ilu is a kalenjin word for shine and so no matter who you are no matter where you are from there is that ka dream there is that bold dream you have uh, we because we are scared of, of failing and we we are scared of what people will say but deep down us there is there is a bold dream somewhere be it furthering your studies seeking that promotion start, starting that business learning that new skill there is that bold dream somewhere my advice is that do not let let it die keep it alive mm-hmm. and every day even if it's a small baby step just work towards realizing it oh that is wonderful so i have some questions for you from a few of our viewers and one of the question is how is living in the usa for you mm i'm actually i'm actually in nairobi at the moment working remotely but most of my experiences living abroad has been in the uk where i was doing my phd and it's been eye opening and it's just changed my world view Mm-hmm. so being getting out of kenya so when i came to jaipur to do my undergraduate i thought nairobi was the biggest city until i went to london and you realize there is a bigger world out there and then you think you've seen smartest people until you go out of kenya and you meet other people so personally it's 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 broadened my perspective and sometimes you think you know something until you meet someone else who criticizes you or gives you a different perspective 
And that has been just the highlight, just people challenging you to think or to see things in a different angle. And, and for me, it's just been eye-opening and, and, and changed my perspective and just like broaden my scope. Mm-hmm. It's, it's been amazing, like in, um, in, in short. Oh, that sounds very interesting and wonderful. So what did you do that set you apart from the rest of the crowd? What did I do? I had a bold dream and I had courage. Not all the time. Sometimes I, I, I didn't have the courage, but I'm happy that uh, my, I will keep mentioning my mom. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. So sometimes when I lacked the courage, she gave me the courage or the confidence. So I would say, in short, I had the bold dream. It wasn't for me. It was for my mom for, from a very long time. And then I kind of inherited at some point. But I would say it's that bold dream and just the courage to pursue it and the courage to stand out not fearing what people see and that just that courage to 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 try and do what you've always wanted to do wow. at least that's what has set me apart wow that is really wonderful that is really great so there's an interesting question from i think an engineering student and he asked what would he be doing before he finishes uh, his engineering course uh, what kind of jobs would he do to increase to make his uh, CV better? It depends, I think, on where it depends on what kind of engineering and it depends on what kind of job you want to do. Because as an engineer, you can work as a consultant engineer, or you can work in industry hands on, or you can work as a lecturer. So depending on what kind of job you want to do, I think the kind of skill set you want to start acquiring will be different. But there's all these sort, kind of soft, soft skills that kind of cut across no matter what course you do. I would say, apart from pursuing the engineering, there is also that talent or the, something you always wanted to try, try it out. It, 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 it opens up your mind. And aside from that, try, try other things in school. Try debate, try sports, try business, try whatever whatever is in, in school and when you get time for, because it exposes you to other things and also adds you near to, it's kind of a way of networking. So I would concentrate on the soft skills. I mean, I, I think as, as engineers, we, um, the soft skill side of, of, of things, we, it's, it's something we need to work on. So I would say work on the soft skills, uh, speaking, writing and, and such. Wow. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gladys, for being with us today. I remember you mentioned I would be having a meeting uh, at nine very soon after this. I'm very grateful that you have spared your time to be with us, to give us your insights and your pieces of wise advice. And we really do appreciate your time for this night. Oh, thank you. And thanks for having me. It's a privilege. You're welcome. Thank you very much for everyone who joined us tonight. I hope you all learned something from Dr. Gladys and that we are all going for greatness and you're going to be greater people and being and working towards our success in everything that you're doing and all our endeavors. Have a wonderful night. Bye.